Mississippi on a Wednesday morning. And joining us now, both live on the air and also at supertalk.fm slash watch. You can go see it for yourself. Or are we going to be on Facebook, Rhino? Facebook Live as well on the Supertalk Mississippi Facebook page. Uh, we have with us uh, His Honor himself, the mayor of Vicksburg, George Flags, joins us. Mayor, thanks for taking the time to join us. How are you doing today? I'm doing good. How are you doing? Doing fantastic. Now, uh, let, let's just get right into this. Uh, there's a huge conversation that is trying to happen around the country, and it seems like we keep getting distracted by some people that are, are going about it the wrong way, in my opinion. I don't know what your thought on it is, but you do have a protest coming up on Friday in Vicksburg, and I just have to say... It looks like, once again, you guys are doing things the way they should be done. Tell us a little bit about this, how it came about, and how this is going to happen and unfold on Friday. Well, first of all, uh, my heart goes out to uh, George Floyd and his family and uh, what happened uh, uh, in the death of George Floyd is indefensible, but at the same time, uh, uh, we have to go forward in this country with uh, understanding that uh, we should learn from everything, uh, any mistake that we make, uh, regardless of where it is. And so having said that, uh, there are some organizers, uh, two la a lady and a man, uh, that came to me, Bunch and Johnson, uh, came to me on this Monday and said they want to do a peaceful march. Um, in Vicksburg, and uh, what I think. Well, first is their constitutional right, and uh, I honored that, and I said they wanted to go one route, and I say, in order us to be able to accommodate you and work with you, uh, would you take this route? Uh, they wanted to start at the police department, and I suggested a site that is open, and at the same time, we've used it for other uh, search incidents uh, that we've had and programmed, and they agreed to it, and then they uh, we start their, they start talking about their concerns. Of course, naturally, we have to worry about the protection of the city and uh, to make certain that it's peaceful and is what they said it is. And they just asked me, uh, would I participate? Uh, would I uh, 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 be a part of it as a speaker? And I agree because of the fact is that I think as a mayor of a city, I should lead by example. And at the same time, uh, when I know that uh, I speak for those people that, uh, that, are, that are part of this city and, and uh, in order to make certain that I'm a part, of the pro uh, a part of the solution and not a part of the problem, I agree. And for until uh, this point, I think it's going well. And I pray God that it go well on Friday. Well, exactly. Now, it's not just you. I understand your police chief over there is going to participate as well. Absolutely. Uh, he's going to speak, and uh, my police officer is going to uh, assist with masks. If some of them need masks, uh, uh, my police officer is going to assist with handing out water. If they need water, uh, we're going to be available for protection. Uh we have a history uh, in this city and certainly the reputation to protect and serve with honor, dignity, and integrity. That's what we do. Uh, those men and women that wear the badge uh, uh, in this city wear the badge with honor. You check our record. There's never been any police brutality uh, as relates to any death or anything having to do in this city long before uh, I became mayor, and we want to continue to that. And one of the reasons for that is because we provide sensitivity training. We provide training uh, to our officers on the protocol on how to make the arrest, how to use stun guns, and how to handle a massive crowd, how to handle people. And at the same time, uh, our police officer will fix your flat. We'll put a battery in your car. We'll move your car from the street uh, if that thing. I get many calls from uh, elder people that are saying that they were somewhere uh, stranded and a police officer came by and helped them. Well, that's what we do. That's what I do. 
Uh, and that's what we want to continue to do. So what we want to do is two things. Uh, one, have a peaceful month, but at the same time, show the world uh, a model of how we believe that you ought to conduct yourself as police officer. Police officer does not grant you any other authority other, in my opinion, to protect and serve with honor, with dignity, and with pride. Well, and uh, we... <laughs> We have seen some instances of that not being the case around the country, and the George Floyd situation was a perfect example because, uh, as I was telling Rhino in the last segment, uh, I, I come from a law enforcement family. I've got a lot of friends in law enforcement. I haven't talked to one yet that saw that video and didn't have an immediate problem and could run down the list of things they did horribly wrong in handling that situation in terms of protocol training procedures and everything else it and i i think you used exactly the right word at the beginning of this when you said it's indefensible the problem is uh, no go ahead go ahead well the the, the the issue is not only it, the reason why it's so indefensible is that in the manner in which it happened and four to, to six police officers washed it now if I had been on that scene, and perhaps if you had been on that scene, uh, you would intervene and say, Johnny, uh, this is wrong. Don't do this. He's already down. He's handcuffed. You don't have to knee him. Uh, I think we, as police officers, we have to help uh, our brothers and our, our sisters or our colleagues to understand the protocol. You can't watch a colleague perform uh, something that you know you can't defend. Wrong is wrong, and right is right. Exactly, and that brings us around to what you were saying about wanting Vicksburg to be a model for uh, the country and the world to show them how you do this, how you exercise your constitutional rights, how you make your voice be heard. And we have seen some examples over the last week around the country of people that apparently don't understand the right way to do it. And to me, uh, that, that goes back to the old chestnut, the old expression, two wrongs don't make a right. And some people seem to be going down that path. And, and that has become a separate problem that we're having to deal with in the middle of this. Well... I don't want to criticize or I don't want to be the one to judge another city. Uh, I'm just concerned about Vicksburg uh, at now, but I do believe that, uh, as Dr. Martin Luther King said, that uh, injustice anywhere is a threat to justice everywhere. But I saw something last night is so indignity of what we ought to be about, and that is in New Orleans. Uh, I saw the protesters uh, hold up I-10. But guess what? At the ho at the results of holding up by 10, I saw police officers in the protest. I saw police officers kneeling. I saw police officers in the protest coming together with one common goal, and that is solidarity. And what they was going to do is to work with each other. And I think that's the message ought to be sent around the world. If they can do it in New Orleans, they ought to be able to do it anyway. And I think the reason for that is leadership. Every mayor, every governor, every uh, community leader ought to be providing the very best leadership and not being a part of the problem. I'll say this and I'll say this on everything. If you're not a part of the problem, you ought to be a part of the solution. And what I try to do is always be on uh, a part of the solution. Now, I get criticized for taking stands. Uh, but uh, that's part of it. And the lady reminded me yesterday, I signed up for the job. Of course, she was uh, really hard on me, but that's, I did sign up for the job. And I told her, uh, but I did tell her this, that when I don't protect this city, when I don't stand up for what's right, when I don't do what's right, when I don't, be de if, when I don't become a leader, and you lead from in front and not from behind, then you need another mayor. That's exactly right, in my opinion. I, I, I couldn't agree with what you just said more. It does come down to leadership, because by definition, the leaders are who we follow, who we fall in behind. And if the leader is going down a bad path, guess what happens to everybody else? We're up against a break. Can you hold up? Uh, hold on through the break, uh, Mayor? Okay. Yep. Fantastic. We'll, con we'll continue talking with Vicksburg Mayor George Flags. Page. 
We are uh, talking with Vicksburg Mayor George Flaggs uh, about the protest that's coming up Friday afternoon at 3 is when it starts, right? Absolutely, yeah. So 3 o'clock yes. Friday afternoon is, is when this begins, and it has been expressed by everybody, by you, by the police chief, by the event organizers, by the people that are planning to participate. Everybody wants this to be a peaceful demonstration, a peaceful protest, uh, which I think is a very worthy goal to have, especially in the times we're living in, because, uh, well, it goes back to what you were saying before the break, Mayor, about leadership and about, uh, you know, they came to you, number one, that tells you that you are the kind of leader they thought they could come to, to talk to, because in some places they're not even going to bother going to talk to the mayor. Because they don't feel like you know they're, they're going to get hurt. Not only did you hear them and agree to it, you're, you're you're providing the PA system for this, aren't you? Right. We have what we call a portable PA system, and they didn't have it. Uh, I have it, uh, and it comes with the seal of Vicksburg on it. And uh, uh, for this purpose, I told them that uh, they can use my PA system, but I could not put my seal on it because of the fact it's not a a public function of the city of Vicksburg, and I don't think I ought to misuse uh, my seal uh, in any way. If we was a sponsor, then I would use it. Uh, so we're not a sponsor, but to use the equipment, I didn't think anything was wrong with it. Uh, I'm prepared to, uh, and I just gave the police chief 900 masks. Uh, if somebody come and don't have a mask, doesn't have a mask, then the police ought to give them one. We not should hold them up or harass them because they don't have a mask. Uh, it is not mandatory to have a mask in Vicksburg. Uh, we uh, we encourage it because I don't think that we should be in the business of mandatory masks. Now we in, we ask our employer, our business, to have their employees have a mask. We leave it up to them to determine whether they want the customer to have a mask or not. Uh, I believe that the mask uh, mitigate uh, the spread of the disease and minimize the death of this disease. We're still in the middle of the most deadly disease in our lifetime. And what's, what's wrong with providing people with masks for their safety if, it, uh, if they come without them? I have them. I, I keep in the disposable mask. So the police department will be available at the police department and uh, down through the route and that thing. If you need a mask, we'll give you a mask. But I'm not going to stop you and say, or the police not going to stop and say, you don't have a mask, so you need to go. Because a part of what we are now in terms of reopening this business and trying to reopen our economy is to put the self-responsibility on the individual to care enough about their lives that they going to practice social distance and they going to, at the same time, wear masks. Well, and it's not just their lives, it's it's the lives of everybody they come in contact with and all of their family and friends as well uh, has been the goal from begin with. But Absolutely. We, we, we've seen a lot of these protests where it just seemed like over the last week everybody completely forgot about this around everywhere and, and, and quit caring and you've got hundreds of people jammed in together elbow to elbow it seems like. Uh, so that, that may have gotten lost in the shuffle a little bit because that's still ongoing as is uh, the the continuing to unfold economic problem. I, I I hate to pile on you, Mayor, but but how how is it looking economically over in Vicksburg right now? Well, I think it's looking a lot better since we've opened up all our business uh, and we're at fifty percent capacity on most of. Uh, I can't wait till we get to around June fifth to be able to open them up. But at the same time, we must be precautious as we open up. And let me just say this because. I'm so uh, uh, proud of this group as sponsor. They put on their flyer, COVID-19 precaution, masks are required, masks will be dis, uh, disseminated uh, to those who do not bring them their own, High hand sanitizer will be available for use, and we will uh, practice social distance. So they're doing everything I've asked them to do. What more can you do? And uh, now, what we that's do all you can ask for. Now, Pray that it be peaceful and everybody be heard, and then we move to the next phase. And the next phase is that we continue to be zero tolerant when it comes to how we govern ourselves and how we protect and serve. Uh, so that's where we are. Uh, but going back to the business, uh, 
I think we're doing what we need now. We continue to uh, uh, increase in the number of cases. But I caution folks, when you look at the way they uh, collect the data on uh, counties and cities, uh, it's kind of misleading. We got 158 or somewhat cases, but it don't tell you how many that have been quarantined, how many have been recovered, but it does tell you that out of that, 10 people have died. I think seven come from a nursing home and three come from the community. Well, them good number stats. Uh, we want it to be zero, 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 but compared to what we've done, uh, I think we've done a great job on staying ahead of the curve. And I think the key to it now is to continue to educate the public, continue to talk about how the uh, social discipline and wearing masks helps. Uh, and you know, on education, Let's go back to the, the protest for a second, because that, that's the goal of this entire thing. That, that, that's what all this is supposed to be about. We have seen cases around the country where you have people coming in trying to use this to, for, for their own ends and means. And you know what I'm talking about, stirring up trouble just to stir up trouble, it seems like, or for some sort of motivation. Uh, have, have you heard any word or do you have any fear of that happening, somebody coming in from outside into Vicksburg and causing a problem with this on Friday? Well, you always have fear uh, when you put people in mass group together. Uh, we just pray and hope that this is peaceful. But let me just say this. You don't have to have a march for folks to come in your city and, and uh, do what people have done. We just pray God that they don't do it. That's what people don't understand. You don't have to have a, a, a day certain or a time certain for people to protest. Uh, anybody can do uh, what people have done. I'm just simply saying is that please don't do it here. Shouldn't do it anywhere. Uh, because uh, we have to be a part of the solution, not a part of the problem. And good leaders should be about that. And what we ought to do is take this incident and all the incidents that have happened regarding the police officer, whether the police officer against the citizen or the citizen against the police officer, so I have to keep them in mind too. What we should do, learn from this. And the best way to learn from this is uh, talk about social change. Talk about how we get to a point where we can all live together, where we can all do what's best. I believe and I've always said it as a legislator and as mayor, we ought to be working with each other rather than against each other. It's always better to um, use pencils and paper than use guns and knives. You're exactly right. And I just want to pass this along from the ceasefire text line. Penny and Winona says, quote, Love this mayor. Mississippi needs a thousand more of him in charge. Have you looked into cloning yourself, George? No, but I, I, I appreciate that, and I hope they continue to pray for me. All I want to do is be the best mayor uh, this city has ever had, and all I want is the best city this city has ever had, and all I want to do is be able to share my uh, knowledge uh, to this state. I love Mississippi. I love Vicksburg. I'm at a point, uh, I keep telling folks, I'm 67, so I got one uh, foot on a banana peel, and I have one on the grape. Well, well I, I, do you need me to come over there and grab your arm or something, get you off of the banana peel and away from that? We we, we want you around for another 20, 30 years, George. Well, I hope, but I just, uh, I just always prepare myself for the good and the bad. But I do believe this is that uh, I have this faith and this resolve in God that if you do right, right will follow you. That's a great philosophy to have. Just remember, if you would like to send George a gift of appreciation, he is not accepting bananas, apparently. He's got the peel already, and he doesn't need any more. Uh, the protest, again, this Friday at 3 o'clock, right, in Vicksburg. Right. right. And where's it going to be at? Where's it start? How, how is this going to progress? It started at the police department. It goes up to Vito Street. It takes a right on Vito Street, which is uh, 
uh, Walnut Street. It passes City Hall. It goes down to Jackson Street. It takes a left and it goes down to what we call the Farmer's Market lot. And uh, it has a stage and a small pavilion and it's there. And we hope that some of the best and brightest minds of this city and those that uh, are from a bit, uh, from other cities come in and let's by all means, uh, let's try to be peaceful. Uh, let's try to uh, uh, govern ourselves accordingly and let's let our voices be heard. And uh, let's walk away from this being expired uh, in, in one way and then with the ability to want to get involved. Uh, I learned in social, uh, I mean, in government a long time ago, and that is is that if you want to be involved, be involved in the right way. Uh, uh, you do have a constitutional right to protest or to march, but at the same time, you have a right to write a letter to the editor. You have a right to uh, vote, uh, and that's, that's the biggest demonstration you could ever have uh, in a society or uh, in a democracy, and that is demonstrate by voting. Uh, my teacher used to tell me, if you, you're not a part of the voting process, then you can't complain about nothing. I have been voting ever since I was 18 years old and never missed an a opportunity to vote. Uh, we should do that, and we should uh, be remindful. Hold a politician. Hold our leaders accountable. When I'm not doing what I'm supposed to be doing, you don't need me. But if you need, if, it, if I'm doing what I'm supposed to done, I want you to be behind me. I want to be held accountable. Being held accountable make me smarter. It make me better, and it make me provide the better uh, service to and be a better public servant. And I'm like Dr. Martin Luther King. He said we don't have to have our verbs and subjects to agree. Uh, to to be a leader because all leaders can serve. So let's serve with dignity, let's serve with honor, and let's serve with pride. Mayor, we appreciate your time today. Thank you so much, and keep us updated on how things are going over there and stay away from the bananas. We appreciate you, man. I, I appreciate it. Thank you for the opportunity. And you keep doing a great job. You're doing too. Thank you. Appreciate it. We'll talk to you again.